friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. We left you hanging on part three of this custom guitar build. Uh, we made those fancy inlay strips. You'll see now how we apply them to the back. In this video, we're going to be building the three-piece back and then we're going to be attaching it to the body. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you'll tell your friends and share this stuff on uh, social media. Thank you very kindly. I'm wanting to get started on the back for the guitar that we're building. The first problem is these are not long enough. You know, I'd never made them before, so I didn't know how much extra to allow. So I'm going to have to combine two of them together to make them long enough to go to span the length of the back. <coughs> but, you know, if you get more nitpicky than that, then the end down here on this one is not perfect. So I could cut back a ways, and the beginning of this one up here is not perfect, so I could start in here, and I could add this length to this, and then get, you know, pieces that are really very nearly perfect. And when I say they're not perfect, you know, I'm splitting hairs a little bit, but they're not lined up in a perfect V. They're just off a little bit. When you get back up to here, they start being really pretty close to perfect again. But down through here, they're not exactly. So, I don't know if I can cut this apart. Keep in mind, it was glued with tight bond. I haven't tried it yet, but I have a feeling I'll be able to cut this because it's not a very big piece of wood. I would like to be able to cut it and keep the white <laughs> intact offset the white from one side to the other so that you won't see the little seam that I'm going to have to create. You have to create one to, in order to lengthen this. and see if I can get it apart a little better with that. I can always start up here in the worst place. See if that makes a difference. Yeah, that seemed to help. got it fixed up here you can kind of see how it would go together there and it looks like it's going to be fine I'm going to get the glue on it and then clamp her down to this piece of paper I think that'll make it perfect no one would be able to tell it really at all. You'd have to get down with a magnifying glass to see it now. So I think that'll be fine. But guess what? I get to do it again. Because we have to have two of them longer like that. Well, there's the first one. I don't think you'll be able to tell that at all. And of course, here's the second one in being glued up as we speak. So. We're at least got that part done, and now we're ready to move on to actually making the back and putting these in there. The sun's coming through at a funny angle here right now. I don't know how well this is going to show up, but the got this piece of wood that I think I can make the center strip of the three-piece back out of. I've got it lined off already, and we're going to cut it out. <music> joiner and we're going to straighten these edges that I just cut. You have to push it through it the right way otherwise the joiner will catch this and bust this out. So I've got to go from the fat end down to the tapered end in order to joint this. I believe that's going to do it. It looks really nice. <coughs> it looks good and straight so I don't see any point going any further. Laying out the back for the guitar and 
Got the inlay strips in there, and with everything laid out, you can see the edge of the yellow right here. That's the pattern underneath there, and it's the same way on this side. It is just barely big enough to make it work. But it is big enough, and that's all that matters. So we're going to get this glued up. Perhaps you can see how I have this laid out. I have my inlay strips in here. Everything's laying on top of this uh, parchment paper. So now, all I have to do now is take it out, and it should come out this way without too much problem. And then we glue it up, and we jam it back in here, and we set heavy weights on it. In theory, it works. Let's see if we can make it work in practice. It's not that e <coughs> easy to glue these little thin edges. I've already jointed all the edges, so the edges are good and square and flat and straight. For me, with edges like this, is to just use my finger because there's nothing else that's going to work any better. Got it about as tight as I'm going to get it. One of the ways to keep it weighted down and flat would be to put a big heavy board on there. And this board has been planed on the one side, so it's good and flat on the one side. I think that'll do. Um, we'll let it set overnight. We'll check it in the morning and see what we ended up with. I just hope it turned out okay. I think you can see I've got everything laid out here and all I need to do now is trace around this. This is the back, of course. It just barely fits on here. But just barely is just barely big enough. she looks like after roughed out. You can see it's slightly flat here and slightly flat here, but I don't think that's going to be an issue because the binding gets cut into this. I've sharpened up my little finger plane just as sharp as I can get it. It shaves hair very easily. And now I'm going to trim down this trim. Uh, this stuff is stand up proud of the back surface and it's standing up by quite a bit. So I'm going to just use this to cut it down. I'll get it really close with this. Well, that's actually pretty good. It's not, you can still feel it a little bit. So what I probably will do is take a scraper to it first and then a sander. The scraper will should get me almost perfectly flat and then the sander to sand the whole thing. put this side out. Originally I was thinking the other side out, but this side might even look better. I, I don't know, it's hard to say. Brother 
John He is a poor hard working man His life was hard But he does the best he can He prays to God Just to thank him for his bread And a roof over his head Brother John Lost his wife When the fever came around The gentle girl between the two bands here, this is 60 millimeters, and between the two bands here, it's 120 millimeters. So this is exactly twice the size of this, which I think makes a nice, you know, even wedge going down through there. Looking really good. It's book matched on these two pieces. This piece is just a straight grain going straight down the middle. So I'm going to go take it over to the pattern now and mark where the braces go. I've got a piece of Adirondack spruce and I'm going to make this back, this first back brace. Right now the spruce is square and straight and to my eye and to the mold and everything this needs to have about a 1 8 inch bow. In other words from here to the center the center should be about 1 8 bowed in. And so what I'm going to do, what I did was I just made me a little stick that's about 1 8 inch thick and I can just trace that on the end there and I can trace it on the end here and then just more or less by eye I have to make a very gradual bow that would match that slight radius and that's that's a you know a huge radius I mean I don't know that's got to be 10 foot at least and maybe bigger than that I don't know because it's almost straight so I don't have any way to draw that radius, so the only way I'm going to do it is just totally by eye. I could do it with my little finger planes, and I might do that. That's how I've always done it in the past. But I'm thinking I might just take it out to the sander and just do it like this on the belt sander. I think that might be the fastest, easiest way and the, the most effective way to keep a long, slow curve in this. So that's what I'm going to try. Oh, we laid her in the ground, she was as light, and her dying hit him hard. Well, I can't really tell by eye, so I'm going to go take it to the pattern and lay it up against the pattern and see where I need to take more off. I suppose that was a fairly good method because when I put it up to the pattern, it's really close. This is maybe still a little high in the middle. Uh, maybe I took a little more off on the ends than I needed to, and I'm talking very little. I'm like the half the thickness of the line in the drawing, so it's not much. I'm just going to knock it, you know, a little bit here in the middle with the sandpaper, and if anything, that'll just slightly taper it out a little bit, flare it out a little bit. But it's pretty darn close, really. So in my opinion, that one's ready to go in. It, it would go across the back about in this location here. And so then we would have to clamp it up. We are not going to be able to use the go-bar clamps on this because this is curved. You know, those go-bar clamps, when you press down, they're meant to keep things flat. Well, I don't want this flat. So we're going to have to use clamps on this. At least that's the way I do it. Now, I mean, if you had a special jig made, if you were making hundreds of guitars, well, you might make a special jig for clamping this up. But, but for my purposes, that'll work. I'll carve the rest of it once I get it glued down. I like to leave the rest of the brace square for clamping purposes. But the back now, or where it meets the back, it's got a nice, long, slow curve. It looks real nice and even when I look across the back there. So this one's in good shape. Now we got to do the same thing to this one. I'm going to lightly pencil the line all the way across this. And the reason is I want to put glue on here in addition to the brace. I also want to just lightly clean this area. Um, I don't think it has to be cleaned, but I think it's a good idea. So I'm going to go get me some acetone and a, and a rag and wipe this down before we glue this up. I have a little acetone on this cloth and you can see the cloth is clean and we'll just wipe right across this area 
And now you can see the red that comes off of there or the color that comes off of there. Really does take a lot of stuff off of there. So I kind of think that's a good idea to do it because I think the glue will stick just a little bit better that way. They heard the voice of God, Brother John. Trouble on earth is ending. All your sorrows soon will be gone. You're a good man. As I always say, you can never have too many clamps on something. If you can get another clamp on it, put another clamp on it. There's no danger of squeeze, squeezing out all the glue, which is just a common myth out there on the internet. It's not going to happen. Probably shouldn't have put this glue on there yet. In fact, I think I'll just scrape it right back off because it's already starting to congeal a little bit. You couldn't. They're calling you home now, Brother John. Well, I think that'll do the job. I wish I could get even more clamps in there, but there's it's just not real practical. I could put my big wooden C clamp in there with a wedge, and I might even do that. Uh, I'm going to clean up the glue squeeze out first, and then I'll see what I do. I think it may have been Colin that sent me these little plastic scrapers. I'll try them here and see if that helps. They might actually do a good job on this since this is set up a little bit. Yeah, that seems to work real well. Yeah, that's actually a perfect item for this. So once again, I, I believe it was Colin. Thank you, Colin, for sending those to me. Never knew I needed those either until now. But right now, that's the perfect tool. Late one day, he was working in the field. Well, that worked really nice. Even though that glue had set up a little bit, I was able to scrape it out of there and then wash it out. And now you can't really see any of it. So now it looks real good. I've already made and marked the next brace. And so we're going to put it in place. The sun was low. And the earth was cool and still he heard his wife calling, come join me now. He fell beside his plow, brother John. Well, that got that one. I tell you what, that ain't easy to do. It probably looks a lot easier on camera than it is to actually do it because there's so much weight there and and you've got everything in your way and and you're doing some of it blind. You're doing the bottom side totally blind. So, like I always say, it ain't easy being me. One last brace to go. Your trouble on earth is ending. All your sorrow soon will be gone. You were a good man. You did all well, I ran out of deep throated clamps. And I needed one more clamp here in the middle. So I just went and got my piece of plywood that I use as a C clamp. And then I just drive some wedges, build it up and drive wedges in there. And trust me, that gets as tight as any C clamp if you do it right. And you can see glue squeeze out all the way around. That works perfectly. So if you're in a pinch for a deep-throated seat clamp, you can always cut out a piece of three-quarter plywood, reach it in where you need to go, and put some wedges in, and that will work. So now I just got to clean up that last little bit of squeeze out, and this baby sits overnight. This turned out really nice. Um, I'm just going to have to carve all these braces down, and I do it by hand. It doesn't take very long if you got a good sharp uh, finger plane. 
Well, that'll give you an idea how quickly you can carve it. Uh, that is carved down pretty round very quickly. I might do some more carving on it yet. Uh, then I'll take some sandpaper and smooth it off. And basically I got to do that to all of these braces. I have the body sitting on top of the back. The back is under here, of course. And I've got it lined up as best I can. This clamp is holding the sides in a little bit right here. They're, they spring out just a little bit, only, you know, maybe a quarter inch max. And I think I've got them <laughs> pretty well located. I've got everything on the center line that I have here. You know, it looks pretty centered everywhere, so now I'm going to reach in and try to mark where the braces make contact with the kerfing. Well, if we had any luck at all, should have those marked. Yep, and they look pretty symmetrical. We've got all these little marks, and you know, there's a lot of ways you could cut those off. You can't really chisel them off because everything's so thin you'll bust something. I thought I'd just try this little, uh, this is actually a metal cutoff wheel, but I thought I might just try that to see if it would work. And I'll just be very careful. <laughs> through anywhere. I, I left a little bit of spruce in each place and I think I can chisel the rest of that off of there. Trouble on earth is ending All your sorrow soon will be gone You were a good man You did all you could and I'm pretty pleased with that. I may do some more tweaking on it uh, as we go along, but I'm pretty happy with that right now. It's got a nice clear sound when I tap on it. I want to reinforce all of these joints, so we're going to cut the stripping that goes down through these joints now. I've got a piece of quarter sawed red spruce, which is the same thing I made the back braces out of. I'm going to saw it across the grain and I'm using about a 5 8 wide strip is what I'm going to be cutting and then we'll resaw it again and that way the grain is going across the joint down those those uh, decorative strips and that'll make it much stronger. They're calling you home now brother John Okay, so now we've got the one strip cut across there, and then now I'm going to resaw it again. It gets kind of complicated because it, uh, it looks the same on all sides. <laughs> oh my goodness. But we want to uh, saw, we're, we're going to have the end grain pointed up, and we're going to resaw it again. And I want to leave about an eighth of an inch approximately. This is just a little over an eighth. That should be about right. Again, I want the end grain pointed up. As you can see, I have the quarter sawn pieces of wood and the, the, the grain is going this way, which puts it across the grain on this, which is that way it won't split as you're going up. If I put the grain running the same way, then it wouldn't really reinforce this very much because it could split as well. This can't split going this way, not very easily anyway. Now, there's a little bit of a, because of these are on an angle, then I have to cut the tail of this at an angle to get them to fit upright. So I've mounted this on the bench and I'll just use that to sand the angle on there. That works really well as you can see. It's got the just really the perfect angle right there. Well you can see that uh, that's going to work on this and it does it, it is in pretty much the same straight line. There's a little tiny bit of a curve to it but not much and I think it'll work fine. Well there you go you can see how it's all clamped up. 
I left the glue on it. I didn't try to clean the glue up. I'm going to chisel the glue out because it's just too complicated and, and it moves it around when you're trying to clean it and stuff. So I'm just going to leave it like it is and uh, chisel the glue out later. And it actually chisels out fairly easily. So that shouldn't be a problem. But that'll sure reinforce that and uh, make me feel better about the seams and everything. I always like to reinforce these sides, especially because they're quarter sawn and this stuff is so brittle, this type of wood. So if you hit it real hard, it could crack. So I like to reinforce it with this fabric, which is common really even on Martin guitars, so it's not unusual. I take the fabric and I, I've got a glue solution there. I put a little bit of water in the glue just to thin it out a little bit. Stand, I can see all the lights of the city For one man to love one woman so much it's a pity Got some glue squeeze out. This stuff's a little hard. So I'll just take a little chisel and lift up. And you can go right up, right up against it and lift it up and it works real well. From where I stand I can see the cantina she goes to Where she's not supposed to But goes anyway Well that's pretty clean. So listen to the tone in this top now. It's real, it almost sounds like metal. It's very hard. I can't really get a good grip on it here. Very consistent sound all the way around. And it's uh, very hard. The uh, I'm gonna carve these little braces down now, these little pieces. I'm gonna make them smaller because they're a little large. And I'll carve them with my little finger plane again. Or at least I think I will. Although carving a, a cross grain like that is not as easy. But it should cut it, I think. Stand, I can hear the music and laughter. Oh, tells me that's what a young heart is after. I see it differently, I see you there with the man. Got some 220 grit on a block, and I'll just run over it a little bit and see what happens here. I stand. Well, it's turning out real nice. I'm about ready to put them together, make them one piece. So here's one last look at the uh, inside of the back. Here's one last listen to the sound. Hopefully you can hear it. The metal, it, it sounds a bit metallic. It's really a, you know, it's the, it's, it's, Basically, its function is to bounce the sound back out, so it doesn't have as much tone as this part, and of course this part really rings. It just rings like a bell. I think I will go ahead and put a piece of fabric over this. I don't know why they always do it. I don't really think it's necessary. But since I've got it open and I just thought of it, I guess I'll go ahead and put that fabric on there. Sometimes I use Elmer's for this, but I think the tight bond is probably as good as you can do. Well, that's about as good as I can get it. It's, uh, you know, it's hard to get that sp spread out and but it, it, I think it's working. No time like the present. We might as well get this thing glued up.
once again, my good friends, I'm absolutely tickled with the results. Almost everybody out there knows OMG and what that means. But to me, it reminds me of a line from the Shirley Temple movies where the little girl says, Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking when I hear what I'm about to let you hear. Now, before I let you hear it, let me tell you the sad news. I've heard these same sounds on my videos over the years, me tapping on things and what comes through the video. And I'm here to tell you that you only get a percentage of what I'm hearing here in the shop. So keep that in mind. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> First of all, here's the top. Oh my gosh, it's got sound and it just rings. Now listen to the back. <laughs> this is where the oh my goodness comes in. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Oh my gosh. And I'm not even hitting it that hard, guys. I mean, it probably looks like I am, but I'm just, it's hard not, it's hard to hit it light enough, you know? It's incredible. I couldn't be happier. So I hope the customer out there is getting excited. <laughs> but while we're on the subject of Shirley Temple lines, and I know it's kind of crazy for a grown man to be talking about lines from Shirley Temple movies, but I like wholesome movies. I like Leave it to Beaver, too. Um, anyway, uh, my favorite all-time line from Shirley Temple was, Well, can you lay an egg? <laughs> and I'm sure some of you already recognize the line, but that line came from the movie where the, I think, I don't remember if it was a teacher or just, the governess or someone who was strict was taking care of her or whatever at the moment. And she says, well, just what is so special about your goose laying an egg? And Shirley innocently asks, well, can you lay an egg? <laughs> Since we're on movie lines, my all-time favorite movie line, all-time favorite movie line, <laughs> I, was from Harrison Ford. No, it wasn't in uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. It was actually in, I think, a far lesser movie. I, I think the movie was Seven Days and Seven Nights, something like that. And he's, and I forget the actress's name, a blonde gal. Um, can't think of her name right now. Anyway, she's all upset because uh, he, she chartered the plane. He was the pilot, and he wrecked the plane on this little deserted island. And now they're going to have to spin, you know, seven days, seven nights there, I guess, whatever, before they're rescued. Well, anyway, she's really mad at him, and she's just saying all kinds of things. And she says, you mean, you mean you're not one of those kind of guys? And he goes... What kind of guys? And she goes, you know, one of those kind of guys where I can hand you a paper clip and a pocket knife and you can build me a shopping mall. And Harrison Ford very calmly says, no, I can't do that, but I can do this. Does that help? <laughs> Sorry, I got a weird sense of humor. You know, the sad news is, We've got this, and you think, well, he's way over halfway done. I don't think I'm at the halfway point yet, unfortunately. I still have to make the neck. And then you got to do all the trim work, the decoration, which is where all the time seems to come in. So we got a long ways to go before we're finished, for sure. Whether we're at the halfway point or not, in exact hours, I don't know. But I guess we're getting close, at least. So it's going to be fun finishing it up from here, but I hope you've enjoyed it up to this point. Thank you for watching. Tell your friends. Blah, blah.